Hello everyone, welcome to Nesso Academy. In the previous lecture, we have understood the if-else statement. Now we are in this lecture and the name of this lecture is Switch Statement. In this lecture, we will understand our second control structure. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic of this lecture is Introduction to Switch Statement. First, I will introduce you to Switch Statement. Then we will move to the second topic to understand important points associated with the Switch Statement. Finally, I will explain the fall-through behavior of the Switch Statement as well. So, these are the topics. Let's start with the first one, that is Introduction to Switch Statement. Now, what is Switch Statement? The switch statement allows us to choose between different options based on the value of a single variable or an expression. So, to the switch, we can pass a single variable or an expression. Based on the value of the single variable or an expression, we would be able to evaluate a specific option of the switch. This can be better understood with the help of the syntax of the switch statement. Here is the syntax. We first need to specify the keyword switch. Within parentheses, we need to provide a single variable or an expression. Based on the value of the expression or a single variable that we pass here, a specific case will be evaluated. Here, we will have the equality comparison. The value of the single variable or an expression is compared with these constants. If it is the case that the value matches with constant 1, then the statements of this case will execute. If the value matches with constant 2, then the statements of this specific case will execute. If it is the case that the value is not matching with any constant that we specify here, then the default case will execute. This means the statements within default case will execute. So, this is how the switch statement works. Now, it seems like the behavior of the switch can easily be mimicked by the if else if letter. Through if else if letter, we can check multiple conditions. We can compare a single variable or an expression with a constant and that too with the quality comparison. This can also be done with the help of if else if letter. Then why do we use switch statement? The same behavior can be achieved through if else if letter, but this is not advisable to do so. When we have the equality comparison, that is, when we want to compare a single variable or an expression with a constant and the comparison is equality, then it is advisable to use switch because it is more readable and understandable. If we compare it with if else if letter, this is more readable. In case of if else if letter, if we have multiple conditions to check, then it becomes so clumsy that it becomes difficult to read if else if. Therefore, it is advisable to use switch when the comparison is equality. If any other relational comparison we want to do, then we can use if else if letter. Only for equality comparison, we can use switch. I hope this idea is clear to you. So now it is completely clear where do we use switch and where do we use if else if. Now let's take an example program to properly understand the implementation of the switch statement. Here is the program. Here I have included the iostream header file and inside this main function I have defined variable light of type care with this character r. I am representing this as the traffic light. Right now, the light is red. This variable is passed to the switch. So, this is the switch variable. 
Now we know that the value of this variable is compared with these case constants. We know that R is matching with this R. Therefore, the statements of this case will execute. Here we have the STDC out statement and therefore, we will get stop on the screen. After this, we have the break statement. Because of this break statement, we will get outside of the switch. Break statement allows us to break out of the switch or to exit the switch. So, this statement is needed if we want to execute just one case. And you can observe this that break statement is part of the switch syntax. So, we need to include it to execute just one case. If this break statement is not available, then the subsequent case will also execute. This might not be an intentional behavior. So, I hope this idea is clear. Now, when we execute this program, we know we will get the output as stop. So, with this, we have understood the concept of switch. And now we know where do we use switch. With this, we are done with the introduction to switch statement. Now, let's move to the second topic to understand some important points associated with the switch statement. Here comes the first point. Integral switch expression. Expression in switch must be an integral value. It can be int, char, enum, etc. Or an expression that evaluates to an integral value. Now, what does this statement mean? The expression or a single variable that we pass to switch must yield an integral value. It can be of type int, it can be of type char or it can be of type enum. We know that int represents an integer, so it always yields an integral value. This means it yields an integer. What about char? We know the internal representation of a character is an integer. Therefore, from here also, we will get an integral value. Similarly, enum also gives us an integer value. We already know this. So, clearly, switch expression must yield an integral value or it must be an expression that evaluates down to an integral value. Let's take an example to properly understand this. Here we have this example program. Within this main function, I have defined variable var of type integer with value 2. This variable is an integer variable. We can pass this variable to switch. So, now this is a switch variable. This variable will yield an integral value. Therefore, there is no problem in passing this variable to switch. Now, within these braces, we have these cases and the default case. We know that the variable var is holding value 2, therefore case 2 is the matching case and hence case 2 will be displayed on the screen. And because of this break statement, the default case will not execute, we will get outside of the switch. We now know what's the output of this program, we will get case 2 as the output. So, we are done with point number 1, let's move to point 2. Constant case label. Case labels must be integral constants. We know that the switch expression must yield an integral value. It can be a variable also. But case labels cannot be variables. They must be integral constants. Now, let's see the example program to understand this properly. Here I took the same example program which we took in point number 1. Here we have these case labels and you can observe these are integral constants. We can have characters as well. Those are also integral constants because their internal representations are integers. But here we cannot have variables. A variable is allowed as the switch expression. But we cannot use a variable as a case label. So here, let's say if we define variable x like this, and in place of 2, if we write x here, then we will get error from the 
compiler. So that's point number two. Now here comes point number three. Break prevents fall through. If break is not used at the end of the case, the execution continues to the next case. This is the fall through behavior in C++. If we do not specify the break statement, then the subsequent cases will also execute until we encounter the break statement. This is the fall through behavior. And break statement prevents fall through behavior. Here is the example program. We took the same example. Here you can observe we have break statements after each case. Now let's say we remove this break statement. Then we have case 2 and immediately after this we have the default case without break in between the two. Now we know without the break statement the default case will also execute. And therefore, we will get the output case 2 and invalid because we know variable var is holding value 2 and it is matching with case 2. So that's point number 3. We must add break statement to avoid fall through behavior. So we have understood all the three points associated with switch statement. This means we are done with the second topic also. Now let's move to the third topic to understand the fall-through behavior. Now, what is the fall-through behavior? We already know this. Fall-through behavior occurs when the break statement is not available at the end of the case and execution continues to the next case. Now, one thing we don't know is that compiler may generate warning as this is general, not an intentional behavior. It is possible that compiler may generate warning if we have the fall through behavior of a specific switch. Now, if we do not want the compiler warnings, that is, if we want the fall through behavior should be an intentional one, then we need to provide the attribute fall through. This fall through attribute allows us to implement the fall through behavior without having any compiler warnings. Now we can understand this properly through an example program. Here is the example program. I have defined the main function and within this main function, I have defined variable var with value 1. This variable is of type integer. I have passed this variable as the switch variable. This is allowed. We know that case 1 is the match and therefore this statement will execute but after this statement, we do not have the break statement. So there is the fall through behavior. Case 2 will also execute and therefore we will get case 2 in the output as well. Now this might not be an intentional behavior. So we will get warning from the compiler. This statement may fall through. We will get the output case 1 and case 2, but we will also get this warning. This warning is associated with this specific statement. Here we have the fall through behavior. Now, if this behavior is intentional, we can inform the compiler about the same by including this fall through attribute. We have included this fall through attribute just after this statement to tell the compiler that the fall through behavior is intentional. So, compiler will not generate warning for this. We will get the output case 1 and case 2. We are getting this output without any warning from the compiler. I hope this concept is clear to you. One thing to note that after this attribute, you need to add the semicolon. Don't miss this semicolon. Also, I want to mention that fall through attribute has been introduced in C17. So, with this, we have understood the fall through behavior, and this means we are done with this topic and this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.